Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of Linux Mint. Recently we received a new release, Linux Mint 20, Yulana, and what we'll do is go ahead and download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. So the very first thing we want to do, I'm here on the linuxmint.com website, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below, we'll go to the download section. And if you hit the download section, you'll be able to scroll down where you'll find the download links. And using the download links, we can select what type of desktop environment we want. We have Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. So you can go ahead and choose whichever one you want. The installation is going to be the same with any of the desktop environments. The most popular one, at least here on Linux Mint, is Cinnamon. So that's the one I'm going to download today. If you scroll back up a little bit, you can also click the all versions in case you want to go back and download a different version of Linux Mint, but we're gonna stick with Linux Mint 20 today and I'm going with the Cinnamon version. Here we'll be introduced to a bunch of mirrors that we can select from. Just make note that this is for a 64-bit architecture, so you'll have to install this on a 64-bit computer. Moving on, go ahead and select a mirror that's closest to you and the download will begin. I'm gonna go with kernel.org for me and the download went ahead and started. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to go ahead and launch and use the Belena Etcher app. So let's go ahead and launch Belena Etcher. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. First thing we're going to do in Belena Etcher is select the image that we just got done downloading. And here it is in my downloads. I have Linux Mint 20, Cinnamon, 64-bit. I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit open. Next I'm going to select a target, but first I need to go ahead and put a USB CD or DVD into my computer that's blank, so give me a moment. All right, and since I didn't have any storage device in my computer, it went ahead and automatically populated. You can hit change if you have multiple USB CDs or DVDs inside your computer, but just make sure you select the proper one because the contents of your USB CD or DVD will be completely erased and the installer for Linux Mint 20 will be flashed onto the storage space instead. So once you went ahead and selected your drive, go ahead and hit continue. Next you'll hit flash and give Belena Etcher administrative privileges in order to go ahead and complete the process. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to the computer or server where you want to install Linux Mint on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select a newly created bootable disk to be the first to boot. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys like F2 or F10. Following that, you'll find a tab usually called boot order and you'll exchange the order so that the bootable disk that you just created is first to boot. After you have that set up, you will save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. All right, and if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. And if you see this screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. We have a few options here. We can check the integrity of the medium, meaning Linux Mint will perform a check real quick to make sure that your installer and the bootable disk that you created isn't corrupt. And at the top, you have start Linux Mint 20 Cinnamon 64-bit. That's the option that we want. But if you have special hardware or need special drivers, let's say you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you may want to select a second option to start Linux Mint 20 in compatibility mode. Otherwise, let's go ahead and select the default and press enter. All right, and we're gonna use their live mode here in order to run the installer. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have install Linux Mint. We're gonna go ahead and double click on that and we should get an installer dialog here. And we have. So running through the installer shouldn't take too long. The first thing you're asked is what language you wanna run the installer with. I'm going to select English. You can select whatever language that you're most comfortable using and go ahead and press continue. After that, you're asked about a keyboard layout, so select your keyboard layout, and once you have, go ahead and you can test it down here by just simply typing in whatever you type in. You should see displayed in the text field, otherwise your keyboard layout is wrong. You can also select the detect keyboard layout, which will automatically try detecting your keyboard. Next, we'll hit continue once we have a keyboard selected. And the next option is whether or not we want to install extra media codecs. This will be required for special types of video or audio formats. Might as well install this, at least for me. I'm gonna go ahead and select install multimedia codecs and hit continue. Following that, we're asked what type of installation do we wanna go through? 
I'm selecting the Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint. Now I have this option because my disk is completely empty and I'm going to only install Linux Mint on it. Now be aware that with this option, everything gets wiped from your current disk. So make sure that you have a storage disk with nothing on it. Otherwise, any and all data will be wiped from it so that Linux Mint gets installed on it. All right, and another option here is the Advanced Features, which allows us to create an LVM with the new installation of Linux Mint. All an LVM is, is Logical Volume Management, which allows you to more easily manage your storage as well as create multiple volumes and pools across several disks if necessary. This is a pretty good option to select if you have a virtual machine, just because it makes life easier on managing storage later. Also, if you select that option, you can encrypt your new Linux Mint installation. All this does is creates an extra security step where you'll enter a password in order to get into your hard drive. I'm going with none today, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay because I have a fixed amount of space, and I'm just gonna use that completely for Linux Mint. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and then I'm going to select the Install Now button. We're being warned one last time that with the current changes to the disk, everything will be erased and Linux Mint will be installed on it. I know that I have nothing on my disk, so I'm going to go ahead and select Continue. Following that, you can go ahead and select your time zone. I'm in Madrid, Spain today. I'm going to go ahead, select a city in my time zone, and then hit Continue. Following that, we're asked for a name, so I'm just going to use Savvy Nick for my name and Savvy Nick for my computer's name. My username will also be Savvy Nick, and then I'll put a password in and confirm that password for my user, Savvy Nick. The computer's name is what other computers on the network will see your computer as, so it will see it as Savvy Nick. And then this is your username that you'll log in with, as well as this password that you've supplied. You can also select log me in automatically. I don't suggest selecting this option just because if someone reboots your computer, they can log in automatically into your account and start doing things on your computer. So I'm going to go with the require my password to log in option. And you can also encrypt my home folder. This means you'll be required to put a password in if you're accessing your home folder as well. You can check or uncheck this box here if you want to encrypt your home folder. I'm not, but I will require my password to log in and then I will hit continue. And at this point, Linux Mint 20 will begin installing. This will take a few moments, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. And once you see this dialog, you'll want to go ahead and restart now. Otherwise, you can continue testing and using the live environment. But in order to get to your newly installed environment, you'll have to restart it. So I'm going to hit restart now. And you'll also want to make sure that you remove any installation media from the computer you're installing Linux Mint on. Otherwise, you'll boot back into the installer and you'll want to do this after you restart. If you do end up back in the installer, you can go ahead and shut down your computer and remove the installation media. Go ahead, hit restart now. And here it actually tells you to go ahead and remove that installation media at this point, And then you can proceed by hitting enter. All right, give it a few moments to boot back up. And if you see the screen, you've officially installed Linux Mint. Congratulations and welcome to your new Linux Mint login screen. Let's go ahead and log in, apply the password that I supplied during the install, and here we're welcomed by the desktop environment and a welcome screen. If you'd like to check out what's new in Linux Mint 20, my Linux Mint 20 updates review video, I'll go ahead and put a link to it in the top right. Let's just take a quick look around the desktop at this point. We have welcome, our first steps, documentation, help and contribute here in the welcome page if you wanna go through those. You can also check or uncheck whether you want this dialog to pop back up next time through. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out. And on the background here, we have our home folder, which is our user folder. That belongs to the user we created. So I have Savvy Nick here. You can see that there's desktop documents, downloads, all for Savvy Nick in here. And then if you click on computer, you have access to your root file system up here. In the lower left-hand corner, you'll find a start menu where you can go ahead and use some quick icons to access a software manager, some system settings, a terminal, and a few other things such as shutting down, 
logging out or restarting your computer. There's also the default web browser, which is Firefox, and multiple subcategories that you can go through and find other programs in. Linux Mint does come with an Office Suite, and it's the LibreOffice Suite if you want to use it. You can also search for any application up here in the search box. If you just start typing, it'll try matching what you're looking for. All right, in the bottom left here, we have quick access to just a few things files if you want to go ahead and access your users home directories as well as a quick start for the terminal Firefox and if you want to get rid of everything on your screen currently and just get back to the desktop you can always click on that icon as well on the right hand side you have a clock and if you click it you'll get a calendar as well where you can also change up the date and time settings next to that you have volume control where you can go ahead and specify the current volume as well as launch a media player if you'd like called rhythm box if we exit out of there we also have access to the current wired or wireless connection that we have i'm currently wired up so it has this icon here available to me i can click on it and choose whether or not i want to be connected and change up network settings if necessary since we have rhythm box opened up it popped up down here i'm just going to close out of it that's not there by default and then we have access to the update manager which just checks for security updates, software updates, and various different types of updates. You can select OK, and if Linux Mint can find some updates, it'll tell you which ones are available. You can go ahead and select whether or not you want to install them from here. And finally, something fairly new is System Reports, where you can see if there are any suggestions made by Linux Mint, so you can go ahead and improve your system. As it says here, there's a couple things it's suggesting, installing some language packs, as, as well as setting up the system restore utility. You can also look at crash reports and system information from here. And that's really a quick overview of the desktop. One thing I want to do is just run HTOP so we can see what type of resources we're using from a fresh start here. All right, here in the terminal, I have HTOP running where we have 101 tasks, 216 threads running, and the CPU usage uh, between the two cores is running about 0 to 3%. We have around 712 megabytes out of 7.76 gigs available of memory and uh, no swap being used, of course. And it seems like there's quite a few processes running here in the background. All right, we're done with that. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Linux Mint 20. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. If you want to join in on Linux discussion and programming discussions, you can join us on the Discord server. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching.